Uh, welcome out to episode 378. <laughs> Boom! Of the good, the bad, and the geeky. I'm Nick Argenbright, and with me is my guest, Jessica Gibson. Hello. And you could uh, find her as a normal compatriot, compadre, at Amanda's Picture Show A Go-Go, and probably mm-hmm. all the many podcasts she has. They're all great. Amanda's Picture Show A Go-Go at amandaagogo.com. So, but if you uh, listen to this episode and you really enjoy it, obviously uh, give us your thoughts, goodbaggeek at gmail.com, or more importantly, subscribe to the podcast, show us some love, and uh, leave us a review. And if it's a great review, we'll read it on the air. That way we give you some love back. Yeah. Actually, I mean, we're technically we're giving too much love at that point. We need to scale it back a bit because we're already putting on this great show you love. But we'll give you more love by <laughs> calling you. That, that's weird. I shouldn't have said that. It's okay. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. And also, if we tend to be forgetful, aka we overlook it, let us know. Be angry about it and say, hey, I left you this awesome review. You should read it on the air. I'll be like, you know what? You're right. Let's do it. Goodbaggeek at gmail.com. All right. Founded in 2011, Mad Lab's Young Writers Short Play Festival is designed to give local high school playwrights a professional theatrical experience. Students submit 10-minute plays, and the best are chosen to be developed and produced. Each student is given the opportunity to attend specialized workshops and collaborate with local and national mentor playwrights during the six months they are in the program. And at the end of the program, the plays are performed at Mad Lab as a full-scale short play festival. Mm -hmm. See, I'm not saying anything wrong. This is good. It's not prepared at all. I'm not reading it. This program has a lasting impact on the student and adult participants alike. Former playwrights have gone on to major theater in college, have worked... uh, have their work included in textbooks and perform on national television. Um, If you would like more information directly about this show, which is July 13th to the 28th, Fridays and Saturdays with two Sunday matinees, um, I created a short link just for this show. Um, Go to HTTPS forward slash four or colon forward slash forward slash D four K dot U S forward slash Y as in young W as in writers two zero one eight for young writers 2018, or you can go to madlab.net and click on Young Writers. Just a reminder that tickets are $18, student seniors are 15, and members are 13. And our show's official sponsor, Boom, is Audible with over 200,000 titles to choose from, 30-day membership. Did you know that we get a 30-day membership if you sign up? Go to audibletrial.com forward slash goodbaggeeky, and you get over 200,000 titles to choose from. Wow. It's, wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow. we're, so we were in a bit for the sketch show at Mad Lab, and you were my wife, by the way, which was fantastic. So we were in two sketches together in sketchy, <laughs> sketchy pitches. First one was you're my wife. The other one, though, is my first line, which I wrote for God's sakes, was, oh, wow, look who came into the bar or something like that. And I had a wow. hard time remembering it. And the only way I could remember it was I, it was uh, right when that video was released of Owen Wilson just doing wow 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 yeah and so lightsaber sounds so yeah and so every time we started the thing I would do during the read I was like oh wow did you see who just came into the bar wow like and it was I'm sorry inside joke explained now you get it now you should have been there why didn't you come and see that's right you know what if you want to see next whatever show they're doing which is young writers and then. Lost in time. Yes, go to madlab.net. See, it all comes together. But also show us some love too by going to audibletrial.com forward slash. We're sorry, Audible. <laughs> yeah, they don't. And last but not least, we are proud members of the It's All Been Done Presents Network uh, and uh, Space. It's still the final frontier. And while plenty of people have watched Star Trek, almost as many people have talked about it, and no one has done it quite like them. Join Stephen, Keith, and Jimmy Jerome, and whoever else stops by as they go over episode by episode, movie by movie, through Trek from its 1966 beginning to the present day. They are currently finishing up season two. In fact, I season think, three. I think they are in season three now, um, officially. Oh, okay. uh, so yeah, they. I yeah. think they're like probably I think five or six episodes. I haven't been in. on since season two. So. There you will. Here you go. So now you're ready for season three. I know. Um, uh, before they get, matter of fact, yeah, before they get into the dreaded third season, the third season has not been released yet on the feed, but oh, they are recording yeah. it because they record it in advance. That's what I'm. Um, <laughs> you can find. <laughs> or do they? No, it's totally not in advance. Totally. It's just like this intro. It wasn't recorded after the podcast at all. What? Um, you can find more info about It's All Been Trekked Before and our other shows at IBDpresents.com forward slash IBD. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So now that the laptop is closed, we're going to talk about the movie tag. (sighs) 
there's just so much to say about it. <laughs> so much to say. Mm-hmm. You know, it's such a big Lee film. Uh, that was bad. Oh, that was bad. I'm sorry. Say a big Lee film. I was trying to do Trump and it just didn't, I said the words Your right. Your hands are too big. Oh, that's very true. Um, why, why? I became the godfather. They t- Sometimes you gotta do, well, I feel like you gotta. gotta it's a very big Lee film. There we go. No. It's, it's, it's a too feel low. it in your jowls. Feel it in my jowls. My jowls. <laughs> I feel it in my jowls. You need like that, it just came from the dentist, stuffed some cotton rolls in your jowls. <laughs> but wait, can I also point out too, like, so I'm rewatching Star Wars with the misses and the prequels, the prequels, when they shoot the force lightning, the guy who plays Palpatine, I can't remember, Neil uh, Diamond, something, Ian McDiamond, uh, he does like fingers like straight Superman across. Pose? Yeah, like a Superman pose. And every once in a while, he'll he'll add, or technically, should I say, uh, the Osment girl will rip him off and do like a weird, like the finger gets crooked or whatever, like the girl oh, from Scarlet Witch. Kind of, yeah, kind of does like one of those, but for the most part, it's always like Superman pose. Like, careful little stick. Oh. Yeah. And but it's like bend the, bend the but, top finger. But so did Christopher Lee. It's like he watched, it's like he got a bad verse. It's like he watched the dude, uh, by the way, who is a great emperor. He is, he, he always plays the back side. I, I love that. That's a great. Ah. It's awesome that he came back for that. Ah. It's, it's like the it's like John McCain, aka the Penguin. <laughs> Sorry, that was bad. Uh, but it's like of all, it's like no, dude, you got to work on your lightning skills. Like, like I'm sure, like in, when you were younger and you just did this, and they just add lightning, and then he's trying to overperform it. It's like this is why you got beat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I mean, he did kick Yoda's ass, uh, which, but, but. Yoda. Uh, that was done by Steven Spielberg, though. Uh, Yoda's Ooh. my favorite. It's my wife's favorite, Yoda's too. She loves best. Yoda. So we're part of her agreement with me is that this summer she has a list, and she has her things that she's going to do on her list. Her summer, because she's a teacher. Mm-hmm. And she goes, should I do Lord of the Rings? Because she's never seen them. She's seen the Hobbit movies. So she's seen them in the proper order they've been in, which is sad, because the Hobbit movies are not great. Um, Fact. But she loves the dragon, so that was that was. Who doesn't? Her, who doesn't love smog? Well, and that's before the dragon spoke. I am death. Yeah. You're like, okay, drama queen. Right. <laughs> Simmer down. So part of our agreement was uh, is that it's Star Wars, and if we do the prequels, we do episode one, two, Clone Wars, the cl- not the whole series, but like the episodes. Choice that, episodes. Yeah, like probably thirty of the eighty episodes or whatever. Okay. That way we can get the story and make Anakin and Obi-Wan not dicks. <laughs> and then watch episode three. And so we watched the Clone Wars movie and she's like, that was actually entertaining. Uh, unlike the last two things I just watched. And I was oh. like, well, oh, and she's like, Anakin's a dick. And like, even yeah, watching Clone Wars, she's 100%. like, he's a dick. And not even like, I don't like him. I don't like anyone. I don't like sand. It's coarse. Oh, fuck. It gets everywhere. Okay. I remember episode two being not as bad. And I'm watching it and I was like, oh, this is horrible. I this just is remember horrible. being like, this is so weird. I got really upset because I love Jim Henson and I love the puppets. And they replaced them with shitty CGI. And I was like, why did you not make she, puppets? You knew how to make either. puppets. You have a blueprint for how to make realistic looking puppets because you've made them before. Why didn't you do that? Because they didn't live up to his vision. Which, okay. You can't have Puppet Yoda like spinning around, but... He can do some shit. So I guess we should specify right now. There might be spoilers for all kinds of things in, in this Are podcast. Are keeping this intro too? Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. We'll eventually get to the point. We'll eventually the, get to, to the, the, which which will somehow, hey, we will get around back to what we're going to talk about. See, the audience doesn't know yet. Did we say what, it, what we're talking about? We said we're talking about tag. We did? Okay, well, we'll get back to there. We 100% without, without, without saying, damn it. Uh, <laughs> we'll get back there. I don't remember what I was going to say though. Yoda spinning around as Yoda, a puppet. Yoda spinning around as a puppet, but I don't know. There was something else. I feel like they could have tried harder. Well, yeah. Well, and had them look less shitty. I do remember being yeah. supremely disturbed that Padme had not aged, and Anakin Jesus. was suddenly older than that her. And I was like, "This where is he's like, weird." You're beautiful, like an angel. And it's like, here's the thing: like a pirate angel. The kid. The kid <laughs> is not. The kid's not bad. He's doing what he's supposed to do. They're all not. They're not great either. But like the dialogue is not great, but the kids sold it. 
And then you have Natalie yeah. Portman's character, Padme, just say the worst thing you can say afterwards. Like, don't worry, Anakin. I think that, thank you. I appreciate that. But one day I will love you too in a very different, I'm like, what the fuck did you just say to that little boy? There's like, one thing I've learned <laughs> is that no matter how hard you try, good acting cannot save shitty dialogue. Sometimes, but if it's bad enough, there's really no yeah. amount of acting you can do that's going to make it better. I still feel like I didn't walk out of the Avengers, not the 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 1998 the TV show remake they did with Sean Connery because of Sean Connery. I hate that movie, oh, but he's the one the, with uh, with Ralph with Thurman. Yeah, Ray Fiennes. yeah. I only watched that, and Eddie Izzard before everyone knew who he was. Eddie Izzard makes that an enjoyable the, the he makes an enjoyable bad guy yeah. but i still hated that movie but i think the opposite is also true no horrible acting. amount of phenomenal writing can improve shitty acting i don't think that hating christensen's a bad actor though i don't either okay i did well usually that's the def, that's the that's the the people think but i recognize there. that there's only so much you can do when the dialogue you, is horrible you, Sarah was like, Samuel Jackson's bad in this movie. I was like, oh, I know. You have you have Qui-Gon Jim played by the wonderful Liam Nielsen before he became yeah. What did you do to my and wife? Ewan and McGregor. And, and Natalie McGregor. Portman. Well, Natalie Portman wasn't Natalie Portman like she is now. Like when yeah. she did Oscar nominated. No, she was nominated at a young age, wasn't she? For uh the professional? Or is that Gary Oldman? Mm, I, I thought she Oldman. I thought she got something for it, but I don't know who she did. But I love she um, popu- mildly popular, but not like Academy Award, you know, nominated Natalie Portman. Yeah, she was still young. Yeah, yeah. He, these are all decent actors, and they're just so bad. It's just so bad. Like the only one who comes out okay is Frank Oz and Ian McDermott because he's all amazing, and the guy who plays the Emperor, Palpatine Yoda. because Palpatine has the most least to do. I, anyway, Yoda. Yoda. Yoda's my favorite. Yeah. Frank Oz is wonderful. Yeah. By the way, best thing ever, if you ever see, and then we'll end on this because it, it's, a, it's a sign of friendship, which is what the movie Tag is about. It's um, true. The documentary about The Last Jedi. I haven't seen it. There is a moment, by the way, we've already said spoilers, so caution. And this is throughout the whole podcast, probably too. Uh, we, ca- we kind of go all over the place. Um, with TV shows as well, so be careful. Uh, but uh, there is a scene in the documentary where Yoda shows up. Uh, Frank Oz plays Yoda, and he steps on stage, and Mark Hamill is walking to the set, and he had no idea Frank Oz was going to be there. Frank Oz is there to do pre-test, like early tests with the with the Muppet to get used to the scene and how it's going to be set, set up and everything. And they have not seen each other for years. And he just he doesn't interrupt him. He just watches Frank Oz do – he can't see Frank. He He just sees the puppet. And he's just like, it's, it's, it's heart, it's touching. Aww. And what's also said too is, you know, Mark Hamill fucking hates the movie. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. well, no, well, they, they openly show him. He's like, I don't agree with anything that you have me do. I will do it. But, and they show scenes of him like kind of sulking by himself. Like he's kind of mad and he's not happy. And him and Ryan, Ryan have like their little conversation and they walk away, not super happy, but you know, anyway, it's, it's really fascinating. But that was like a, oh, like, and after they done, they, they talk and it's like, Friend, it's so good to see you in years. And they and you're like, oh, and that relates to the friendship that we may talk about in the movie. To see, I brought it around. Brought it all back. Boom. Right there. The movie stars John Hamm, Jeremy Renner, uh, Leslie Bibb, uh, Ed Helms, Isla, Isla who, ha, he, ha, Fisher, Annabelle Wallace. Um, did I get that? I don't know. I the the lady from The Mommy, Jake Johnson. Oh, and Rashida Jones. Yeah. Let's put it, there's a great cast involved and we're going to talk about the movie and you know what, we might divulge into other things and you know what, if you're curious about how it will all relate to DuckTales, stay tuned. That we was, forgot, we forgot, Hannibal Buress. Hannibal, yep. Yeah. Is also in it. S- uh, S- Sable. Sable. Uh, Sable. God. And, he, well, we'll talk about him too. Yeah. And uh, here's we episode will. 370, 378. Eight. Thanks, see, this is I why. I remember the numbers. Thank you, because I suck at it. Episode 378 of The Good, The Bad, and Geeky. Tag!
so what did you think the movie is a pleasant surprise yes but it's also mildly forgettable but in a way that I want to see it again so I don't forget because I thoroughly enjoy the movie Mm-hmm. I, which I was not expecting to thoroughly enjoy the movie. I did call when I was sitting there in the, in the theater before it came up. I was like, I bet you anything that there's going to be hard in this movie and it's going to piss me off because, <laughs> and it's, but the thing is, it's going to be really cheesy to me. It's a tight rope. And they did the cheesy thing, but it didn't bother me as much. It felt very, I don't know how those guys pulled it off. Maybe it's because I've watched Ed Helms for so long in The Office, (laughs) and he's not being Andy. So I was just like, dude, you can act. I mean, I know you could, but, like, this is kind of, I'm not pissed. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) I surprised myself how much I enjoyed watching it. I was like, You should not be enjoying a a movie about that. Pleasant movie. It was a little long. Like, I, when it got to, like, right before the wedding, I was like, this movie's really long. yeah. But I mean, it feels long. Yeah. I, I think it's really still like only like an hour and a half. No, it's like almost two hours. Like, yeah. which today is, I feel common. Yeah, you know? but for a comedy, still that's true. That's kind of long. Well, the Hangover changed shit. It, it's I know. Which, everyone's like, like, we have to be these superhero movies are like two and a half hours. That's and it's our new like, normal. Ugh, okay. And that was like Hangover. Yeah, that fucked comedies up. I feel kind of because now they had to be like super R rated, and this one has some vulgarity, but it's not super bad. The only thing that was kind of bad was the, well, it's bad taste, but it was still fun. Yeah. I feel it was done in a light way. Was the whole miscarriage thing? Um, yeah. Which so I guess we should explain the plot of the movie <laughs> uh, because we're talking about it, but we're so the movie's called Tag, and it's about a bunch of friends in the '80s, or now actually in this case the '90s, right? Like late '80s, early '90s. I like when they were kids. Yeah. Yeah, late '80s. And then because all the music was like a New Jack Swing slash R and B rap. Which yeah. No, so like I growing up in the with. '90s, but like born born in the '80s. 80s. They, which is my age, so I'm. I was like, "This is fucking great," kinda. But they're like older than us, so it has to be. It has to be like they grew up in the eighties. But they play tag, and they have never stopped playing tag. And there's yeah. one dude played by Jeremy Renner, of course, who is his character's name. It's Jerry. Uh, Jerry. 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 Who's uh, never been tagged. Never been tagged. And they play for the month of May every year. Right, and it and it goes pretty far. Yeah. Um. And the opening scene of the movie is a really good example of that. Is Ed Helms's character, uh, Hoagie Hogan, he interviews for a job as a janitor, <laughs> and you're like, okay, I think I know. Like, he's probably like, what's he doing? Yeah. And you're like, God, these guys are all bums. And then you, he's like, I'm looking at your resume here. You're a veterinarian. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, with your own practice. <laughs> with your own practice, it's very successful. I think you have two offices or something. Why do you want to do this? He's like, I don't know. I just want to walk the earth, you know, bucket list stuff. This is your bucket list? Clean people's shit up? He's like, eh. Yeah, but I want to very... clean that guy's shit. <laughs> and I want to clean that guy. And you're like, okay, which I kind of knew where it was. That was where it was going. But that was just very, very funny. But so then it gets the group together uh, because Jerry apparently is going to quit. Yeah, after, after this year. After he gets year. married. After he gets married. Yeah. And, uh, and it becomes a one, we got to get Jerry at least once. Mm-hmm. And interestingly enough, too, Jerry doesn't hang out with the guys as much because of that. Yeah. He stays at a distance, and that's an interesting dynamic because you really see they are good friends, but they they haven't seen Jerry really. Like, they, when they, during the month of May, they see Jerry, like, very faintly. Yeah. But they all hang out. So that's an interesting dynamic, and... Yeah, it was also, I liked, though, that none of them were too good for it. Like, John Hamm's character tries to be like, yeah, no, I'm in the middle of an interview, man. You gotta go, we'll do this later. Later, And then (laughs) Ed Helms is just like, no, we have to go now. Jerry's quitting. And John Hamm's like, yep, we're going. Sorry, interview lady. (laughs) (laughs) But but the best part is, too, is that when he goes, the the thing that my first major, major laugh, though, that cracked me up and it was stupid and I feel ashamed that I laughed at it, <laughs> but you can never go wrong with physical comedy is where he's like, what are you going to do? You going to break the window, get out of here. He's like, I will. I own this whole goddamn building. Yeah. Or something like that. And then he throws it in its plexiglass. So it naturally just beans John Han in the head, which I was like, he'd be bleeding. Yeah. That's okay. But again, <laughs> this is a, if monkeys could fly, 
Jake Johnson will survive and not really get hurt when he falls like to like a story down yeah. with a fucking air conditioner. And he top. never loses his blend. Which that's impressive. Let's be fair, <laughs> even for comedy standards. Never at one point in this movie does he lose it. By the way, what do you think his character's name is? What, what, what what's his nickname? It was Ollie, right? No. Okay. So his character's name I thought was Chewy. Chewy, that's right. It's not Chewy. It's what Chili. Is, chili. Maybe that's what it was but, a combination but, but of these things. My wife. My wife has. I was like, because I pulled it up to get ready. I was like, Jake. Ch- Chili, Randy, Chili, Chiliano. I was like, oh, that makes sense. But I thought they called him Chewy the whole movie. <laughs> and I had no concept. So that was a weird little side uh, thing. But yeah, so they play tag and they got to get Jerry. And of course, anything you can think of, they try to do. They, 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 and they fail horribly. Disguises. And Jerry's like a Sherlock Holmes of tag because he looks at them and he's like, analysis. Oh, oh this person has. Best. This person has male shoes on. Da da da. I can see their pants through here. It's got to be Hogan. Okay. So okay. So this is the this is one of those things too. They did not ruin in the trailer. Like they showed that clip of when he they're in the the, the house where the engagement party's at. Mm-hmm. But and they show it in, in the clip. But they took out all the voiceover, which to me just makes it so much better because it's how he processes everything, and that's how you get yeah. to see it really fly and oh my god it's just so yeah, funny just like, initiate you, no touch protocol no touch <laughs> protocol yeah and then it's like there's chili he's coming at me he always just runs for it no the plan faint smell of marijuana the faint, faint, <laughs> faint smell of marijuana and he never has a plan he just goes for it appreciative but fail always going to fail and yeah. Then, yeah and of course he just like completely dodges them it, it's oh god it, yeah, his commentary was great. It was so good. <laughs> and then the switch up, which I liked, is in later on at the church when they have him cornered. He, uh, they switch it to everybody else too on top of Jerry. Yeah, where it's like, I got this, I got this, I'm going to attack him. <laughs> his overconfidence is what's going to bring him <laughs> down. <laughs> that was so great. Yeah, and then yeah, it was. It was really clever and really good, and it made me mad because it should not be good. <laughs> I, I feel like deep by default. I, I don't want a movie to ever fail. Yeah. But like, when you go into it, you're like... But the premise, you're like, this is ridiculous. Yes. yes. But it was so enjoyable. It was so enjoyable. And I do like, like you were talking about, yeah, it was kind of cheesy, but it does depict, like, you have those kinds of friends who even in shitty life situations can do stuff, and it makes you feel better. Like, they depict them oh, at the yeah. funeral, and he's just like, hey, buddy, I'm real sorry about your dad. Also, you're it. And he's like, he's out of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Which, um, and also, uh, Isla Fisher, is, am I saying that right? Uh, I never know how to pronounce Isla, her yeah. Well, we'll Isla just, or Isla, yeah. I never know. She, um, she does a wonderful job playing the crazy but supportive wife. Yeah. And, um, dear God, she's terrifying. <laughs> and I, but I also like too how supportive she is. She's just like, you know, gr- no, we're not allowed to play. It's just between them, which sucks. Yeah. But she still like is w- now granted, she knows something that we don't know kind of too, but, um, which is Hoagie. I thought I caught it because remember they go down the house and Hoagie is just like, he's like, Ch- Chili's just like, Hey man. I'm going to, I'm going to smoke. Uh, and he, he looked at him. He's just like, is this okay? I'm in your house. And he's like, actually, I don't care, man. Matter of fact, now that I have a license, I, I, I would love to do it with you. Yeah. Dude, I've always wanted to smoke weed with you, man. And then I think his yeah. mom comes downstairs and then they overglow. And I was like, he's sick. There's the heart. And then they never brought it up again until right when the wedding. And I was just like, oh. Yeah. So that's why. I was like, oh, or did you cut it out or something? And yeah, so she knows that Hoagie's sick. And it's just all a ruse. It's not for Jerry. Yeah. Jerry's like, I'm not going to fucking quit. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. on top, I baby. love that when he's like, I'm not quitting. <laughs> quitting. Why would you ever believe that? <laughs> That's like, right. What? Which I thought was really cool. But the yeah, I go for it. I was expecting them to pull. I thought the wedding was fake. I did too. Because if if the miscarriage is fake, the wedding's got to be fake. Yeah, but then it's like you knew the miscarriage had to be fake because you did see the wedding in the Instagram in the um the previews, or you see them walking oh, into the wedding true. in the preview. So I'm like, okay, well, the wedding has to clearly be on. So this must be what she's faking. But I was still convinced the wedding was fake up until like the end. Yeah, I did too. But I really like that the that the spouses for every, all parties were super supportive of I everything. Know. But and even like in a good way, like in like a healthy, 
um, competition way. Like both wives were just like, no, no, you're not going to take our man down kind of thing. Yeah. Which was, but it also raised the point, which has made me super happy, is Jerry was like, I have an addendum, the amendment, which I thought was really cool too. They have, they can do an amendment they all yeah. have to vote on, which is the women can now play, which I think, and again, Isla Fisher cre- is, is terrifying. <laughs> I know. She's like, dive tackle. I know. It was such a... It's like, damn girl, and those heels in that dress. Yeah, and he's like, my husband is going to go out. He's going to have a perfect record. No wedding is going to get in the way of that. I'm like, damn. Damn, that's in the hospital. And that's in the hospital. And she came to a fucking church an hour before her wedding to get him out of it. I I was like, Jesus. The only part I didn't like was when Jerry was like, if you come near my wife, I'm going to... Or my baby, I'm going to knock your head off or this something like this that. This isn't a fucking game. I was game. like, whoa, 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 whoa. I know you're faking, and I don't like this part. <laughs> See, so I it creeped me out because it was terrifying. It's like when you go too far with a friend, and that's why it gave just a weird vibe. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you're not wrong. It, I guess that's the point, though. It's just like, if it is real... And they think it, except for ch- chili. chili. <laughs> I will keep one as calm, chewy. But I did <laughs> like, <laughs> I did like his reaction. He's like, "No, I can just walk over and hug him, man. It's fine. Give me the tag. Give me the tag." <laughs> yeah. And if she really is miscarrying, you know, that sucks. <laughs> it's just like, mm-hmm. oh my god. And then later, when he's like, "I don't want to say you deserve it if later you had a miscarriage, <laughs> but you'd have it coming." <laughs> I was just like, "This is so funny and so oh, horrible." Oh god. And she just looks at him and she's like. Have some of this food. Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, she's like, she doesn't, like, that's how competitive she is. She just brushes off because her husband, like, they won, technically. Yeah. And, you know, they made the amendment and so they screwed him, kind of. But Ed Helms, oh, God. I mean, and that was just, that was like a train wreck in slow motion where he's, like, watching everything. And then they do the fake out where he does tag him. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. And everyone <laughs> cheers. And I was like, wait, why is everyone cheering for this and not, oh, no. And then, oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. And then it's the slow motion, complete fail. And then he doesn't get up, which is like, oh, yeah. man. But also, uh, I feel like Jerry is ex-military. Yeah, and they he give works hints out of that. I know he works out a lot. He owns his own gym. Well, and he's awful damn limber. Like when they do the stunt where he jumps up onto the walker, oh, and he's Jesus. just balancing on the walker. God. I mean, I was like, this is a cool scene, <laughs> right? But okay, so the best part of that scene in reality is that that get up is. Did you stick around for the credits? Yeah, they show clips from the today the Today Show or CBS Today or whatever. Of the real guys playing, and that is one of the outfits where she's like running outside in that same get up and tags the guy. Yeah. And I'm like, oh God. But I mean, no, that is so yeah, Jeremy Renner does some kind of weird flip onto top of uh, an old lady walker and just is kind of like Spider Manly perched <laughs> yeah, on top of it. For an extended period of dialogue. For a long period of time. Like he has like a mini scene. Oh, no, it's a, a mini scene of dialogue. In this gigantic action sequence, kind of. Well, a tag action yeah. sequence. And dear God. Yeah, he's not even holding on to the walker. He's, like, sitting yeah. crouched with his arms on his knees, like, yeah. thought you could get me? Yeah, it's like, really? I could I could tell it was you. Yeah, and you're never going to get me. Yeah. I'm going to get this. And, and I love how everyone in the mall is just like, is this old lady bothering you? <laughs> no, right. <laughs> Because it's Jerry. Everyone loves Jerry. But again, I thought that was kind of neat, too, is that they point out that Jerry stayed home yeah. while they all moved away. And, you know, and in the process, though, Jerry also is, because he is the number one, he dodges them all the time. He doesn't hang out with them all the time because he'll get tagged. Yeah. Which is, I have that one friend that feels kind of on the outside of the group kind of thing. And it's interesting because, you know, you do text them and you're like, hey, we should hang out. And then, oh, no, something has come up. And it's like, in the back of your mind, you're like, you're expecting that to happen. Mm -hmm. I feel like the same kind of vibe. I feel like that, like, I feel everyone has a Jerry, you know, too, which is really, uh, yeah. yeah. See, the movie made me me feel feels, man. It had feelings. I know. And and I was so happy at the end when they were all running around the hospital playing tag. I was like, this is such a delightful scene. It is. And even with little Ed Helms, like, who can't yeah. really run. And he's, like, slowly going after him. Though, in that one last shot, he's clearly running down yeah. the hall. What is it? Leslie B- 
Bibb. Yeah, Leslie Bibb is. She's in her dress, her wedding dress, and she's running. Yeah, she plays Miss Susan. And the reporter gets in on it too. Yes. They all get in on it. And, uh, yeah, which was really, again, I just love that fucking. What's her name? Oh, goodness. Rashida Jones is just sitting there smiling. Rashida Jones. So this is an interesting little, if you ever need to play Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, this movie will work out well for you, and here's why. <laughs> I believe the key to any good Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon, like if, it, if you can't figure, if you're like good with like, oh, that one actor was back when he was a nobody was in that one scene for five seconds. That's how you get Kevin Bacon. Or you know what I mean? Like they can, yeah. There's some people that can do that. I can't do that. You have to go to the bigger stars. Like bit parts they were in, not like cameos mm-hmm. because they were nobodies at the time. Or it was an actual cameo. Tom Cruise, Meg Ryan, Tom Hanks are the big guys that you go for. Mm-hmm. Because everyone's been in a movie with Tom Hanks and thus Meg Ryan. And thus in the process, A Few Good Men is your key. Because Tom Cruise has done everything, almost everything with everybody at some point. You can get back to them pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. So uh, this, is, this is a fact from IMDb. I'm not just pulling this out of my ass. Um, Jeremy Renner, Jake Johnson, and Annabella Wallace each starred opposite of Tom Cruise in blockbuster films. Renner was in Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, yep. Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, and Johnson and Wallace were both in The Mummy. Yep. Which, I mean, thankfully I haven't seen that movie, but I hear it's horrible. I've, I've it's not. It's not spectacular. <sighs> which is sad because I really like Jake Johnson. But they did have... Uh, Russell Crowe? book of... What is it? The book of... Amun Ra. Book, Book of the Dead? Book of Amun Ra. Oh, Amun Ra. Which... In there. In a little cameo. I was like, the Book of Amun Ra! <laughs> I really hate that that studios, and this is a weird... Here's the thing. Actually, this does will apply to this. This movie is doing decently well. Mm-hmm. If they made a sequel, I'd be happy with it. I don't know how they're going to have the same heart, because at that point, it's just a bunch of people playing tag. And you're being, how can you be more outrageous with each other? But everything today is a franchise, or they try to make a franchise. So The Mummy, like the fact they try to do the Dark Universe, it's like everyone's trying to do I what mean, Marvel's doing. It's just don't do that. They could do it if they do it right. Well, you but... know what? Here's what you do. <laughs> you, you don't count your chickens, and you just try to make a really good movie. And you know what? You don't tell anybody else about the plans. The only person who should have the plan is maybe the writer, and he needs to shut the fuck up. And the <laughs> guy who runs the studio, maybe the director. That's three people. I like how I said three people and I said two with my fingers. <laughs> I said three people. Also, strangely enough, okay, other cameos, because we're just doing random trivia. Um, mm-hmm. Jeremy Renner and Leslie Bibb have both been in Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. Yeah, she's Christine Everhart. That's right. The reporter from Iron Man, Iron Man 2. And she also, I think, did a cameo in Iron Man 3. And, and in a lot of the Marvel one-shots. On... YouTube, mm-hmm. there's a channel that's like inter- a Marvel news channel yeah, she interviewed- where she is Christine Everhart and they. I knew she interviewed uh, Ant Man, like after yeah. after the yeah, Civil there's War thing. like ten videos or something that's, on that YouTube that's, channel. That's so awesome. I randomly found it one day and was like, "What?" That's that's beautiful. That's um, and it's like production, qu- like they're nice. It's not just like her doing it by herself and her. It, it's, room somewhere. The other okay, so Ed Helms and Isla Fisher were both in Confessions of a Shopaholic. Mm-hmm. Even though Helms was not credited in that, uh, where, who else? John Hamm and Isla Fisher were both in were both in the movie Keeping, Keeping Up, Up with the Joneses. Joneses. Damn, look mm-hmm. at you! And of course, Renner and Hamm were in what movie together? Oh, actually, okay. I have a question for you. Does the movie pass the Bechdel test? Oh, that's a good question. Now I've seen this a few weeks ago. You saw it yesterday. I saw it yesterday. Let me. I yeah. I don't think it does. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember any interactions with the women. I know the reporter and Isla Fisher, Isla Fisher, Mm -hmm. talk. One time they talk about John Hamm shitting his pants. Yeah. uh, Because he did a roundhouse kick and apparently pooed. They talk about him. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) And I think the only other time they talk about the game but she's still referencing that, like, it's them. It's their thing. Because neither of them, none of them talk to Rashida Jones. And I don't think she talks straight on with the... So, 
Okay, so because she talks to Leslie Bibb. Because the because isn't the other? Uh, I I thought they were going to pass because I thought as they have to be talking about a relationship. So when they talk about Chili, they that, have to not be talking about a man. Ah, uh, okay. It's two women are named. They speak and they speak about something that's not a man. Okay, but I think the only time they talk together, they're talking about a man. Yeah, I thought it was more in a romantic, platonic, not in a platonic way, but like a romantic way, because they they weren't just at all. They just at all. Well, then shit. Yeah, that didn't. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Never mind. No, I don't think so. So the, really, that's the worst thing I can think of in the movie, besides Jeremy Renner being too much of a dick in that one scene. Is yeah. I mean, <laughs> let me put it this way: when we saw Fallen World. Fallen Kingdom, where the fuck it is. <laughs> we were both like, we wish we saw Tag again. Damn, that's how bad it was. I did not enjoy it. I, I mean, have yeah. Heard only bad things, and that's from people who like love Jurassic Park. I love Jurassic Park, and I was just like, what the fuck are you trying to do here? What 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 is your game? Cash cow, Chris Pratt. That's. I didn't like Mr. Rogers growing up. He was boring to me. I told Amanda, I was like, I didn't watch him every day. I went through spells. Like, you, like, I love the theme song. It's a beautiful day in the neighbor. I love that stuff. And then when the pup, well, when I was super young, the puppets were cool. But then I was, I would watch Sesame Street over Mr. Rogers because the <clears throat> puppetry in Jim Henson's puppet shop is, is obviously phenomenal. very, it's phenomenal. It's, it's, it's much better. But again, now that I'm an adult and I watch clips of it, I'm just enamored by it because I was like, I, well, part of it is too is like I already knew what he's talking about for the most part. Grant doesn't hurt to re-listen to it, which is the point. Well, yeah, and he's I very. Feel. And I was explaining it to my little cousins. I took them to see The Incredibles this weekend because mm-hmm. I told them I'd watched it, and they were like, "We don't really know about him." And I'm like, "Well, that's okay." And I was explaining like he's actually very forward thinking because he's like, "You are allowed to have emotions. You are allowed to express the emotions. Yeah, that's the way you learn how to." do it healthily and control, you know, it leads to better control and all that stuff. And like, right. you are special and you deserve to be loved. You don't have to do anything phenomenal to deserve to be treated like a human being. And it's just like, hmm. for some people, his message is still too forward thinking because some people are dick bags. Yeah. Uh, so at what point did you start to lose your shit? Oh, um, fairly early on, they had a clip of a little kid who was like, Mr. Rogers. And I was like, oh, God, this is adorable. I like you just the way you are. And I was like, oh, stop. stop. Was it a little girl or a little boy? Uh, it's a little girl. And he's probably like, he's like I like you just that. too, little girl. Like, he probably was just like, well, thank you very much. He like, did. He's yeah. like, thank you. I like you too. And God I was like, darn oh. it. Uh. And then at the end, like, it was just the impact he's had on people. And then I had anger tears because apparently the fucking Westboro Baptist Church protested at his funeral. What? Because the police officer, I didn't know that actor, uh, is a gay man. Oh, he's gay too? Yeah. The, uh, the one guy they put his feet in the pool with him? Yeah. So okay. they protested that because he's tolerant of gay people. And I was like, maybe you shouldn't be such a sack of shit. Westboro Baptist. I got real angry. I was like, <laughs> there were hand motions. Did, in the did they did they show the clip of him speaking at the where he got the, I think the Kennedy honors? They did not show that. They just showed. Um, they pulled a fast one on you because the um, I guess there was backlash. When he got older, where people were like, Mr. Rogers is the reason that this generation feels so entitled, da-da-da-da-da. He told them all they're special, and blah, blah, blah. And I have feelings about that line he, of thought. I but was about ready to say that a second ago, and I... I they showed I um, a thing... F- he did a commencement speech, so they showed that near the end, where he explains it. He's like, when I say you are special just the way you are, it's what I said earlier, like, that means you don't have to do anything phenomenal to deserve to be loved. Like... Yeah. But then in the credits, they didn't show the speech, the Lifetime Achievement or whatever speech, or, yeah. but they showed him going on stage and hugging the kid who was presenting it to him because it's the kid in the wheelchair who yeah. was on his show. And I was like, look at you psyching me out with this because mm-hmm. I cry every time I hear that speech. I'm like, oh. It's a beautiful speech. Yeah. And they showed like the Congress stuff and how he's the reason we still have PBS. 
For right now. For now. <laughs> no, I was going to bring that up because I don't believe that. I mean, my problem was I watched too many John Hughes movies growing up. That had nothing to do with Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's like mm-hmm. everybody gets their happy ending or it's like, oh, you're the unpopular kid in school. Well, you'll still get the girl. No, that shit doesn't, that doesn't work out. But the, the other stuff that Ro- the, the whole principle Rogers taught though is super important. And yeah. th- but that's not where I got m- my problems were fucking John Hughes. I mean, I love John Hughes though. I want to yeah. be very clear with that. But that's not but his fault. That's my then, fault. That's the American ideal. We don't do well with stories that don't have happy endings in America. So uh, like it's just not a thing that we like. Right. Even this tag that ends like, oh, he might die by next year. Yeah. It's still a happy ending. Like, we don't do sad we don't, endings Well, it's, that it's bittersweet. It, it's bittersweet, yeah. which is, and you focus on the sweet part, which is, yeah, I could not be here next year. <sighs> All right, you can tag me. And yeah, I, and I was that, still a part of me was waiting for him to be like, psych, bitch. <laughs> I kind of was too, but then I was really happy because then he's like, by the way, new amendment, all the girls are in it, and then it just goes nuts. Yeah. And I was just like, this is great, and it makes my sad heart feel better. And then cause, and then I started getting mad because they were leaving the room and playing yeah. tag there, and I was like, that's not fair for him. And then he, then at the very end, him and the uh, Susan start coming out yeah. and doing Running it. Running down I, the I think home. he tags her. She tags him and he tags her. He or like, like fakes him out. He's like, oh, oh, it hurts. And they're like, oh man, buddy. And he's like, ha ha, <laughs> gotcha. Right, but you're not wrong at all. Like they, they, you have to have the happy ending. There's a great video. Uh, someone did a Q and A with Stephen Fry, mm-hmm. who is a world treasure uh, yes, in my indeed. opinion. Indeed. Uh, and they asked him, like, what's the big difference to you between American comedy and British comedy? And he's just like. It's simply, it's not really just comedy. It's just with stories. Like, the Americans uh, have the happy ending. And also, they're the cool, slick guy. They walk around and do finger guns at everybody. (laughs) And you know what? The Americans find that awesome because that guy, he's going to make it. And the British, we are nothing but have sad endings. (laughs) We hate hate ourselves. And that's okay. (laughs) Yeah. And we move on with that. And sometimes we have a sad ending. Sometimes we, but he goes into that. And it's like the British uh, pinpoint their failures as successes while the Americans fail only have success. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and the failures make you better. And it's like to, till you reach to succeed. And then in Great Britain, it's usually not necessarily the same. And he's like, that's what they celebrate. And I was like, oh, that's clever. Yeah. And that is a big issue with America is not teaching people how to learn from failure. Yes. Because, like, kids get so down on themselves when they fail. And it's like, no, you're allowed to fail. It's okay. Then you learn from it. And I know I still struggle with it. I hate failing. I failed today at something, and I I hated it. And I was mad at myself. And then I went back, and so I I do customer support for some company. I'm not going to say what. Yeah. But I listened to the the escalation call I took and I was like until I listened to it I was like really down on myself. I was like, "Oh, you did this one thing wrong and this other thing wrong." And then I listened to it I was like, "No, oh, I did a good job. I did a good job." Mm-hmm. I mean, I could have done that better, but I for the rest of it I'm fe- I felt I feel a little bit better, but I, you feel like nervous in the pit of your stomach. You're like, "Oh, how could I have done that better?" It's yeah. like acting every night and you you're like, "Oh, oh I yeah. could have played when that." I screw up. Or just don't do something as good as I know I can do it. Oh, I get or, so mad at myself. Or like if you get a direction and you're like, I want to make them happy mm-hmm. kind of thing. And you're not, you just feel like you're not hitting the mark. Then that that's its own thing too. Because you can be, well, you could be, or that I'm cocky. It could be I'm cocky. <laughs> but I was just like. I am full of myself. So. Uh, well, uh, well, I mean, I am. <laughs> But, like, you know, like, if you feel really cocky and, like, oh, I nailed that. And someone's like, um, here's a note I gave you last four times we've done this. And you're like, oh, no. Shit. Did I not? Did I? Am I not living up to your expectation of what you <laughs> want from this role? And then and you're like, okay, deep breath. And then later you're like, you did a good job that time. I was like, yay, that time. Yeah. And now I got to duplicate it. What did I do? Got to keep it up. Got to keep it up. Keep it, keep it, keep it up. Um. I mean, something else that my wife pointed out uh, is that the movie, I felt it was long because um, until they all got together in their hometown, 
the movie was kind of, it was like just kind of slowly. Yeah. But again, but again, I'm glad it did because it introduced everybody. Mm-hmm. And the only one you didn't really get to know was Jerry. And of course, that was kind of the, the point. point. Um, I did love, my favorite joke in the whole fucking movie was when, um, oh shit, what's his name? The paranoid friend. Oh, oh, I was about to say, we need to talk about him. Uh, Sable. Yes. When they get duped into thinking Jerry is, or no, they're snooping around Jerry's house and Jerry's, and Sable's like down with the uh, newspaper girl. And he's like, look at all this surveillance equipment, six hats. I don't know him anymore. <laughs> like, he points out he has six different hats. Like, and I'm just like, why is this so funny to me? Like, that's the clue that it's like, oh, we've drifted apart. He has six different hats. It's like, I've never seen Jerry wear that many hats. I've always just, <laughs> he's been a one or two hat guy, but six is too far. I mean, but let's, he was, I think, the MVP of that movie because he starts off and like, really, I felt like in the trailer he was funnier. And mm-hmm. but granted, we're he not there yet. Up. Oh no, he like once they get to the house, it crescendos up, and he just then he's just on the rest of the time, and it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of well because the first time you meet him, he's in that therapy session, and it's kind of funny. It's funny, ho ho. Yeah, you're like, how the hell did they get in that, how, <laughs> to the closet? Right, and I, that's fucking creepy as shit too, because that means they had to get there super early or somehow bribe somebody to get in there, and that's a. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, look. If it wasn't a female therapist, it wouldn't be better, but it would but it would be. But the fact <laughs> it's a female, it makes it creepier. Well, she didn't even know he, they were in there. I know, which first off, bravo to them. I mean, that's how good they are yeah. at, at hiding. Is it, is it, was it all the guys or was it, it the was, guys and the wife? It was the guys. Just, just the, the three guys. guys. Which and it did love to. It's like, were, dude, you're going through some shit right now. There were questionable... <laughs> Uh, physics involved in, involving their transportation because there would be six of them and they'd be in like a four seater car. I'm like, how the hell are they getting around? You know, I, th- you know, that's probably a thing where they shot it first, shot that that stuff first, and then they went back into the. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like the what, what car do we have? It's a six seater. And then eventually no. they got an SUV, and I was like, now life makes sense. Oh Jesus, the. Uh, the golf course chase was just hysterical. Oh yes, when he's throwing the golf balls out at the. Oh right, I was I like, was "That's like, so good." It, the, it's the lamest chase ever, but yet it's not. It's. Yeah. Oh, it's but so, some of the things they do to each other, you're like, "Dang, if this was real, you would not survive this well." Oh, like oh, the yeah. log trap, the friggin' Rambo log trap. Oh, that hits yeah. chili in the chest. I was like, and he's dead. Yeah, you, you would have <laughs> or, cracked his ribs and he would have bled to death and all kinds of stuff. Dear. But yeah, they just go through a lot of physical harm. Oh, and also, oh, did you know what scene he broke? So, fun story, Jeremy Renner broke his arms. Both it, of them? Both of them. <gasps> I remember hearing that, actually. Was that this movie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a matter of fact, he apparently wore green screen gloves for half the movie. And didn't do oh. a lot of the stuff. So he just moved his arms barely like this. And I was like, could you tell his arms are CGI? No. I could not either. So the scene that he did it as, and he even said it's the stupidest scene ever. Because he's like, I've done three Avenger movies and like three other Marvel movies so on top of that. So now we know why he was not in Infinity War. <laughs> no, no, it had, actually had nothing to do with that, surprisingly. It had nothing to do with that, surprisingly. Shock, but, shock. What, but what happened was is that it's when he's in the church and he climbs up on top of the, of the chairs yeah. and he rides the chairs down. Yeah. It was uh, the <gasps> chair started to fall before he was ready. Oh. And when he was going down, he first defense mechanism. Yeah. And right as he was doing, he's like, I'm going to break my arms. And he, and he did. Ooh. And yeah, they took like two days off. Yeah, because I forget who else it was. You heard two versions of it. I think it was Jake Johnson. He's like, I was doing New Girl and I came back and... Jeremy, the sets, they're, they're all in the hotel. And, and John Hamm's like, yeah, Jeremy broke his, broke his fucking arms. <laughs> we're, we're, we're off for two days. He's like, what? I got to go. Back. He's like, I know. I know. And, and so, yeah. And so the rest of it was all green screen and all that. So wow. I was like, which, which makes you wonder Dude, what other. Work magic with green screens they nowadays. Can't. Uh, Oh, what did you think of the mm-mm-mm crash test dummies in credits bit? What? Or, oh, so during the end credits, yeah. they just had the face of... It started off with Jeremy Renner, and he just goes... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, 
and they do the music video technically of Crash Test Dummies. Mm -hmm. Was this all the way at the end? No, it was right after the video. They just started the normal like roll up, scroll up credits. Yeah. Probably about forty seconds into it, his face appears, and they start singing the song. I as it was didn't see it. It's kind of bizarre and weird, and. I was like, I kind of wish you did a better song than this one. But it's, <laughs> then, mm, 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 mm. yeah, they do all of them. And the girls even get kind of in on it, too. Um, but they're just really there for the humming. But it's mostly the main core guys are the ones that are singing in the main verses. It's the strangest fucking... Why didn't they pick a more fun song? Well, they, I don't know. I think maybe because they already had the rights for it in the so- earlier in the movie. and But they had more fun songs in the movie. Yes, they have Motown Philly back again. Yeah, a little East Coast swing. Mm-hmm. I fucking love. I love New Jack Swing. That's like that was my jam in the '90s. You have music like that. Yeah, I it was love. actually a really good soundtrack. Well, they I were quite like more it. into the rap side, and that's why mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know who these what these songs are, but they have to be late '80s, early '90s because it's kind of all in that vibe. Yeah. But I still loved it. But it was mm-hmm. just like, it was weird it to me. It fit really well, though. I one of them was a Tony, Tony, Tony song, and I know that. <laughs> I feel like one of them was a Tony, Tony, Tony song. But, yeah. Um, anything else that you want to talk about tag-wise? No, not tag-wise. Is there? Oh, okay, um, let's ask this. Do you talk about previews? We can. Well, what were you going to say? Do you have anything else you want to talk about? Oh. <laughs> There's a preview with John Hamm that I saw yesterday. It's like... L, not L Diop. What is it? He's in a hotel. Oh, uh, uh. El Riviera or L. Wait, 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 wait. One night at the something. I don't remember. It's a hotel. Yeah, with uh, uh, Jeff Bridges. Yeah. And um, other people. And Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> oh, yeah. Chris Hemsworth is fucking creepy. Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, he is, and I'm excited for that. Uh, I think everybody it looks is really good. Oh. I was like, I am into this movie. Bad Times at the El Royale. El Royale. I was completely off. He plays, uh, John Hamm plays Laramie Seymour Sullivan. What a, that's a good name. That's a cool name. And scene. And done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jessica. I was so excited. This was fun. Sorry it devolved into singing theme songs. It's okay. Uh, let's be fair. I mean, I like Tag a lot, but I just was like, I don't know what I'm going to say about this movie. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, like, and doing stuff with Amanda, like, comedies take, like, no time. Yeah. We're done in, like, half. Yeah. All right. Not a lot to unpack. Get out of here without cheese! You're a creep! Go away! We're having a good time until you show up, cheapers! Go have some coffee with cream or something! Because I'll tell you something! This is a happy place! Have you been to the Red Hand? No, I feel like... I feel like... I did. Well, anyway, we're here to talk <laughs> Jesus. What the... It, someone right now is driving in their car going, What the fuck are they doing? We're it's like, sorry, rah, driver. Rah, 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 rah. It's like both of us going... <laughs> rah, rah. <laughs> Um, this will all be in by the way oh really (laughs) oh probably (laughs) probably you're not editing out my nonsense then we wow wow oh wow (laughs) wow yeah wow okay wow Wow. and then obscure harrison ford finger pointing 